Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time we're going to talk about calculative fields in queries. We're going to look at the two major ways where you can create a calculation in a query, and we're going to look at some complications that arise when you're creating those calculations. So for this example, I've got the products and order details tables from the Northwind database that we've used in previous screencasts. It's a database about a food wholesaler. And in this instance, we're going to look at the Boston crab meat products and the quantity, unit price, and discount fields out of the order details table. If we just take a look at those records by clicking the datasheet view button, I get 41 records because 41 different orders had Boston crab meat on it at a quantity of 20 and so forth. Unit prices are either 1470 or 1840. And sometimes they also have a discount. So let's go back to design view. If we wanted to know the total for that individual line item, I'm going to click this column and press insert to insert a new column here. We would obviously need to multiply the quantity that they purchased by the unit price. And we create that calculation directly here as if it were a new field. The way to create a calculated field is just to type the new field name, and I'm going to call that subtotal, and follow it by a colon, and then add the expression. Well, you see that the column's not very wide. Now, I could widen it more, but oftentimes when you're building an expression, you'll right-click the cell and go into Zoom, which gives us the Zoom dialog box, and that's just a whole lot more room to enter an expression. Now, the expression is simply using the field name, quantity, and multiply with the asterisks, the unit price. Now, given that these two fields do not have a space in them, I was able to type in that expression without typing the left and right square brackets around the field names. You see that Access put them in automatically for me. So that's another good tip. Try to not put spaces or special characters in your table names, query names, or field names and then expressions down the road will just be easier to enter. So here's our subtotal, the quantity that they purchased times the unit price. As soon as I click OK and go to my data sheet view button, though, I get an error message. And the message is telling me that that specified field of unit price could refer to more than one table in the from clause of your SQL statement, because we know that all queries are really just building SQL statements. Go back to design view. The problem with this expression is that the unit price field is in both the products as well as the order details tables. Now, typically, you do not see the same field in two different tables unless it's being used as the single field that joins two tables. Oftentimes, the linking field does have the same field name just to make it really clear as to how those two tables are connected. This is a bit of a quandary, and we'd have to go back to our business rules about how this businesses run to understand why we have the unit price field in both the products table as well as the order details table. The reason it makes sense in the products table is that every product might have a specific unit price. The reason it might make sense in the order details table is because we might want to change that unit price every time an order is placed for that product. We have a standard unit price that we can refer to for the product. So I'm just going to delete my calculated field here for a second and pull in unit price from the products table. So my first unit price is going to be from my order details table. My second unit price is going to be from my products table. I'm just going to look at that data. And what it's telling me is that for Boston Crab Meat, the standard unit price for that product from the products table here on the right is $18.40. Because I can see different unit prices, both $14.70 and $18.40, here in the column that represents the unit price in the order details table, I can tell that for whatever reason, this business is overriding the standard price with this smaller price for certain customers. To create a calculated field that includes the unit price from the order details table, I've got to qualify that unit price field to make sure we know it's from the order details table and not the products table. So it would look like this. Quantity, I'll go ahead and type in the square brackets this time, times, and then I want from the order details table, and I have to type square brackets in this case because there's a space in the table name, dot unit price field, and now that subtotal calculation, that calculated field will work. So I'm going to OK that and then look at that and 
new sheet view. And as I scan down here, quantity 10 times 1840 is definitely $184. I can tell that my calculation is correct. 10 times its lower unit price, that order of 1470 is $147. If I wanted to include the discount in it, I would do another calculated field, which discounted subtotal would be quantity times the unit price from the order details table times one less the discount, because the discount's a percentage. And let's see what our discounted subtotal looks like. So I'm going to temporarily change this unit price to $20 just to make the math really easy for me to figure out. 10 times 20 is 200 less 10%, that would be less 20, is about 180 bucks. We've got some formatting issues because decimal numbers don't always convert perfectly in the binary computer system. But if I apply some formatting, it's gonna look a lot better. So I'm gonna right click on that discounted subtotal field, go into its properties, go into the format, and let's format it as a dollar amount with a currency format make sure only two decimal places appear and look at our data sheet view button again and here's our 10 times $20 it's 200 10% and now that discounted number looks a lot better because it's rounded and formatted as I want to see it. I'm going to go back and change that to 1840 so that that calculation is actually accurate again. So that's how to make a calculation and how to format it in Query Design View. If I go into the Zoom dialog box and I can see that entire calculation, I can also right click and go into the Build dialog box and the expression is there as well. The Build dialog box helps you find other table names, query names within the tables. It helps you find the different field names. If you're using access functions, it can help you find the different function categories as well as the expressions within each category. So the expression builder can also help you with a complex expression. But in the beginning, I either like to just go ahead and type it directly into the field cell of the query design view, or I like to right click and zoom and just type it into the zoom dialog box without getting into the complications of the expression builder. I'm gonna show you another type of calculation that you can create using queries. And for this, I'm gonna use the employees table. I always say that it's really important to always break out the first and last name when you're referencing people in any table data. And the reason for that is it's very difficult to sort by last name if that first and last name are all in one field. However, when you're using that information on reports or doing a merge of some sort, you often want that name to look like it's one piece of information. So you can use calculated fields on text fields as well. For example, I could say full name, colon. We always put a colon after the new field name and then do something like this, first name, and then concatenate. The concatenation character in Access is the ampersand. Concatenate that to a space and any text that we want to add to a calculation always goes inside of quotation marks and then concatenate that to the last name. And this is going to really look great because even though our records are still sorted by last name, I have a new calculated field. It looks like that information is all one entity. Let's throw in the higher date too just for fun. You can even have these sort orders, these fields used as sort orders, and then not show them in the data sheet. This is going to, again, give us a data sheet where the last names are sorted in alphabetical order on last name, even though it looks like a full name. This just shows how you can use fields for sort purposes, not display them on the data sheet, especially when you're using those fields in an expression like this. Let me show you one more way that text, especially names, is constantly together in a calculation and that is to do last name and then comma space, first name. This also looks really cool. So we've got last names, comma, and then the first name. So anytime you're setting up your access database or any database, if in doubt, break it out. And the reason I say that is because if you don't break out the pieces of information, such as last name and first name into their own field, you're making it much harder on yourself to sort by those individual pieces of information. And now, knowing about calculated fields, you can 
those pieces of information together in any way that you want to see it. Of course, the calculated fields are not a duplication of the data, but a representation of the data. For example, if Stephen Buchanan calls and says, you know, I'd really like to be called Steve, just edit that entry. Any calculated field that references that first name will also automatically update. Thank you.